Bengal has awesome ideas, strongest Indian economy, great location which allows it to expand both into Burma and in India. And also not only it has one of the best mission trees in the whole India, it can also easily form Tally and get its mission tree. And afterwards you can also form Hindustan and get third mission tree. In this video I will show you how to jump Bengal into the strongest Indian nation. As usual, let's start with privileges. As you may notice you have 5 estates, so you can choose a lot of them. But don't be too enthusiastic. Don't forget, the more privileges you grant, the less crownland you will have. So just grant minor privileges, Brahmin legitimacy to rule, religious diplomats, grant a local residence to scholar, choose the first option, Hanbali school, for aggressive expansion, and this should be enough for now. And you can also take Jane's loans, but it's not really necessary right now. Just remember that you can do it. Sisland, as your rivals choose Orissa, Vijayanagar, Janpur. And now as for alliances. You might try to ally Delhi, maybe not right now, maybe first let Sirhind reform Delhi, definitely ally Malva, and if Gujarat doesn't rival Malva, you can try to also ally it. Bahmanis are also a good choice, but it might be difficult to ally Bahmanis, mostly because of your religion. Get land acquisition taxation policy, denounce sex practices, take this decision, and adapt the title of Khalifa. Now start building spine work on Kok and Arkan. Lower your maintenance and wait. Also, don't forget to make your ruler your general. You need to kill him ASAP, just because he's not really good and your heir is just awesome. And while here it is, Sirhin declared in Delhi, I think it will win and I will quickly ally it. Also, by the way, I think I should mention it, but you can declare on Risa on 11th December. You already have core here and you can hire some company with good general like this one, with a lot of shock, and try to win. But generally, I found that it's almost impossible to do it that early. Well, it's possible, but just not really worth it. At minimum, just because you will need to siege capitals of all of these vessels. It would be quite painful. So I would recommend to wait for a little before declaring on Orisa. Most likely it won't get any allies. But if you want to, you can declare. Also, you might want to start building some light ships. You need to build 5 light ships. Ok, fabricate claims on Arakan and on Kok as soon as possible. You might also have a company now. So most likely Arakan will ally Ayute, but there is always a chance that it won't or it just won't enter the war. And you can almost always declare on Kak, that's what Arakan to do. Well, it's like to Assam, not a big deal, we will conquer both of them. It shouldn't be really difficult, usually Kak doesn't ally strong nations, so it should be quite easy. Just try to siege with your free company, not your main army. Ok, here we go, was extremely easy. It's not necessary to annex Kok's allies if it has one, but if you can, then why not. But generally you just need these two provinces. Or if you're declaring on Aragon, you need these two provinces. So let's pass out, take money, and now you should be able to finish first mission. Yes, conquer Kok. It will give you claims on these areas. Generally it should be easy to conquer these nations, they're quite isolated. Also now I will ally Delhi. And if you don't know what to do with your diplomats, you can carry some favors. So I see two nations without allies, and I think that's a very good opportunity to declare. If you have claim on some weak nation without allies, it's better to declare earlier than later, just because it can get some allies. And just like that I could easily conquer some provinces. Don't worry about aggressive expansion if you expand into this area, it's quite isolated, most likely no coalition will form. And I see I can also declare on Manipur. Don't be shy if you can declare to it. It's not like those APMs can resist your invasion. Ok, force move tech, if you have conquered anyone, you should be able to finish one more mission. First build to your first limit, you need 100% weight. And now you should be able to finish one more mission. And get claims on Janpur. Easily conquer one more province and we can declare on one more OPM. It does have some allies, but still should be quite easy. We don't really have any good alternatives. So let's declare I think. Not only we would get one more province, but also be able to finish one more mission and get claims on these areas. If you're not conquering India, don't forget about attrition. Don't stack all of your army in one province. Now I'm just going to wait. Eventually it's going to give up. It's also possible to wait peace it's alive, but it's not really necessary. No need to spend our precious manpower. So I'm checking on my neighbors and right now it should in theory be possible to declare on Orisa. But I think it would be better to wait until Orisa annexes one or two of its vessels. It will make war a lot easier. And maybe I will be able to even cool in Delhi. Well, here we go, it surrendered. There was no need to siege Tibetan provinces. Ok, we've conquered Assam, let's complete one more mission. That's going to open even more opportunities for conquest. Well, that's the whole Bengal game, you need to find opportunities for conquest. You need to conquer. So it seems soon I should be able to declare on Risa, but declaring on Burma nations is not the best idea currently. We spend a lot of resources for not much of gain. Also, if you can't conquer Arakan or maybe already someone strong, you can always 
declare on their allies, not on the nation itself. So it seems I somehow could ally Bahmanis, which is really really good, they can help us with Orisa. But it's not really a guarantee, not always you can do it. So I've got few small tech and I think there is no need to wait for Bahmanis, we can declare on Orisa just like this, with help of Malwa. And by the way, it annexed one of its vessels. Should be a little bit easier now. If you want to call in your allies, don't forget to mark Orisa's land as wild to you. Because if you don't, your allies will occupy these provinces for themselves. Okay, well, let's declare. So it's allied to Arkan, which is very good, because I will also be able to conquer Arkan and finish our missions. Okay, I've sieged Arkan's fort, which is really good, because soon we should be able to piece it out. And Malva currently is working as our mid shield. Orisa constraints on Malva. Okay, the war is going just great, because Orisa constraints on Malva and not on me, that means I can easily siege down its provinces. Okay, I've sieged down all of Orisa's vessels, let's carpet siege. And I'm trying to add peace its small OPM ally as soon as possible. Okay, I think I will peace out Arakan right now, no need to wait. And after you conquer Arakan, you will be able to finish this mission. The perfect scenario is when you can conquer both Kok and Arakan in the first few years and be able to declare on any nation in Burma. It will grant you a lot of expansion opportunities. Anyway, a second reform you can take strengthen Bengali traders or additional merchant, very useful. So taking first city group depends on what you want to do. If you want to have less coalition and conquer it quickly, I would recommend take diplomatic. At minimum for this idea, for province or score cast. If you wanna play tall, you can take innovative or trade, also good. And maybe you can even take expansion or exploration, if you want to colonize. Well, I would take diplomatic, I think. Also what you can do right now is to take this province as necessary to complete your mission, and maybe some sort of trade and some pretty portraits all, well just to take a look at the crazy expansion and start improving relations with these nations that are going to join the coalition. At this point you won't encounter any major coalition, but still it's good to not encounter any coalition at all. Well, okay, no coalition, we can piss out, it's that easy. Okay, so from Orisa it's extremely important to take this area, don't forget to do it. And there are some good releasables that might have been conquered by Orisa. Antre is very good releasable, it will help you with conquering Vijayanagar and Bahmanis. I will also take one center of trade, and I think maybe let's take some money, or maybe it would be better to take more reparations. And also I think that I must mention that if you can fully conquer Orisa, for example if you could declare early enough and win, you will get all of its vessels, you will get your own vessel swarm. It might be good, it might be even bad, depends on your preferences, just because they will take a lot of automatic slots, but still I must mention this. Maybe let's give Tirhut some money. Okay, now let's piss out. No collision will form, because there are less than 4 nations that can join. We have truth with Chanda and Orisa, so no problems. Okay, now after this you should finish this mission. And it's really a good mission, because it will give you minus 15 points or score cast. It's very good modifier, believe me. Okay, now what I'll do is I will release Andra. I quite like it. And we can even try to demand Andra's scores from Bahmanis. Yes, we can. Okay, now you should have quite a choice on who to declare next. So we can declare on Burmese nations, we can declare on Nijayanagar, Trampur, basically on anyone we want. The whole Bengal game looks like this. You conquer someone and try to find next opportunity to conquer someone. The Bengali Krainza. Okay, I think let's declare on Mon Khan and make a Kyoko Bajarant. Well, I won't be able to declare on Trampur anytime soon and I have to choose with Orisa. So why not have some fun? Besides, if you conquer Kale, we would have more than 50% of provinces near this wasteland, and that means it will be of our color. Okay, let's make Kale coefficient and let's go. I think I will start with conquering Kale. So we do have more tech, so we are going to just destroy our enemies. Still, I need to defend my homeland just because they might carpet siege me. And I will get a lot of war exhaustion. Okay, here we go, Kale is sieged, next up, Awa. I will break some tributaries. Awa, by the way, is the strongest Burmese nation, so it might be a good idea to weaken it a little. Okay, I will piss out Kale. Well, now you definitely need to check coalitions, Burma is not awesome, there can actually be one. And yes, now this basement is of our color, I'm satisfied. Well, the worst thing about Burma is that every nation here, well, almost every nation, has 3 level fort, so you need to keep it in mind, it will drain a lot of your manpower. Okay, I somehow stack wiped Awa, I don't know how, but well, that means we can soon piss out. Without our, it's extremely easy to win war. Okay, what I'll do is I will just break a few tributaries, so I can easily conquer them later. I could also break its alliance with Lansan, but to be honest, most likely it wouldn't really help, most likely it would find some other allies. Also, by the way, to quickly white peace any nation, you can occupy one or two provinces and go to their capital, usually they agree after this. Okay, and now let's conquer Mon Khan. Well, okay, I think we can peace out right now, and in theory it should be okay. 
in theory it should, in theory a collision shouldn't appear. Now not to we have painted some map, although that is quite important. But also I think it was good demonstration of fact that if you conquer Burma, India won't get angry and if you conquer India, Burma won't get angry. So if you don't want collisions you can, for example, conquer something here, then in Burma, then again here and repeat. Well, right now I think I will abandon Burma and focus on India. We've painted some map and that should be enough for now. Also, of course, you don't have to blub that much. It's not really necessary. I'm doing it just because I can, but you can conquer slower. You don't need to declare war every 5 seconds. Also, I think it's time to delete our free company. One last battle and I'm doing it. It doesn't have any manpower now and that means we have to delete it and let it replenish. Well, right now we can, I think, chill for a little. Uh, because if I declare only Jayanagar, I might anchor Bahmanis. So I assessed our situation and it's currently impossible to declare on Jampur. Although if you can declare on Jampur, do it immediately. Well, we can try of course, but most likely this war will take out of my resources. One second. It has 2 mil tax less and that's very important. Well, you know what? You know what? I think we may try to declare on Jampur. I think we may. Not sure if I would be able to call in Bahmanis, but I can try. Okay, perfect, we can call in Bahmanis. So what I've done is I've reduced Bahmani's opinion of Jampur. Their relations were like 30, that's why I think it worked. It doesn't always work, but you can try. So usually Jampur would be the toughest nation to beat. Sometimes they can even ally Bahmanis. So if you can't declare, declare as soon as possible. If you can't, not a big deal. Okay, let's take Jampur. It's the most expensive province, I think. And let's call in everyone. We have quite big advantage. Okay, so now our goal is to piss out big allies of Jampur. So no matter who, Gujarat, Bahman is usually it's enough to just each capital. That is very important. Jampur is quite smart. It also understands that you need to piss out allies ASAP. As you can see, it tried to focus on Delhi. Also, by the way, I've just realized I made a minor mistake. It's not a big one, but you should know about this. So I haven't marked this land as vital and you can't do it while at war. Well, it's not really important. I will just need to carp a siege a little so my allies don't take all provinces, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Although just warning that they still may take uh, provinces if they see them as vital. Even if you set them not to. Well here we go, just like said, just capital and we can peace out. Wasn't difficult at all. We can even take some money. But if you're to war with allies, are you going to take war reparations? You will get all of them. And if you take money, you will share it with allies. And now the war just became 10 times easier. John Poor still has mil tech disadvantage. Also, by the way, it may be beneficial not to pass out right now. It's good that I've noticed this. So Orisa is granted by Malva and Janpur. It might be a better idea not to pass out right now, not as soon as possible. But wait until our truce expires, and then we can declare without breaking guarantee of Janpur and without angering Malva. So it might work. Well, the most difficult part of playing in India is diplomacy. You need to think how to bypass alliance blocks. Also around this time, around 1470s, 1480s, you need to start developing renaissance. Encourage development on your capital, nothing difficult, capital will be good enough, and start developing. Well, I had to spend some diplomatic mana to lower our exhaustion, but I think it was worth it. We can declare. Okay, it will break Malva's guarantee, that means we can pistol Janpur. Okay, from Janpur take whatever you need for your missions, doesn't really matter what exactly, just make sure to break its alliances. This what will cripple it. Although if you haven't allied Delhi, you may try to make a wall. Try to protect Jampur from other nations. So I think I'm going to Carp Siege and call in Bahmani. Carp Siege so they can take my provinces and call in Bahmani so they deal with Orissa's allies. Okay, let's call in Bahmani. Well, by the way, new opportunity to conquer something. Why? Well, because Lansan is an ally of Awa and I think Monyan. We can declare on both of them. Keep an eye on your neighbors. If you see that their allies are busy, you can move in. And by the way, check out this chat Mon Mao. Literally the first time seeing this. As 34 we can take either expanded real court, or if you're planning to have a lot of vessels, maybe for reconquest, you can take representatives of the crown. Ideally you want to fully conquer Orisa, or if it's not possible, at least take the necessary provinces for your missions. Here they are. Well, it happened. It couldn't have lasted forever. Well, the main danger right now is that it may ally Janpur. Otherwise it's quite easy to deal with Bahmanis. And here it is Renaissance. Didn't take long. Now the most difficult thing will be to embrace it. Well, here we go, didn't take long. Lansan won't support neither Monyan nor Allah. What does it mean? It means easy conquest. Once again, it's not really necessary to conquer that much. Still, even though it's not necessary, it is quite easy to blow up as Bengal. Just keep an eye on your surroundings. Well, I underestimated the Avon's development, I guess, and willingness of other nations to protect it, but we still can 
pass out. Most likely coalition won't appear just because first we have truce with some of these nations and second, a lot of these nations are busy with war. If they are at war, they won't join the coalition. Well, okay, this was a little bit risky move, but still, no big coalition, just a few Tibetans and we gain more provinces. And also the truce with Pahmanis has ended and in theory we can declare but for this we need approval of Malwa. So it seems we can declare on Bahmanis and easily win, they don't have any allies. Like I said, keep an eyes on your neighbors, we don't really need many provinces, just reconquer something and take two provinces for our missions. Interesting, interesting. Well then, anyway, we soon should be able to peace out. Yes, we can peace out right now, I think. So, unless you want to paint map, it's not really necessary to take a lot of Bahmanis. And yes, it's even good that Malwa peaced out, because now we will get all the money. So what do you want from Bahmanis? From Bahmanis, actually, you want to check first your missions if they conquer some provinces that are necessary, retake them. You might want to reconquer some cores for your vessels if you have some. And you might want to take some Coromandel trade centers, of course. But it's not necessary. Okay, now I will impress you some with Bahmanis money. Perfect. Yeah, it was quite easy. But it's quite easy to become the strongest Indian nation quite early. The worst thing that can happen are the alliance blocks. Like for example, if Jampur allies Gujarat and Bahmanis. But it's still possible to deal with it. As your first ability, take justified wars. And don't forget to build some marketplaces and workshops if you have some money. Well, marketplaces are especially important. There are some very good provinces to build them. Okay, we can once again declare on Chanpur. This time I will mark provinces necessary for our missions as vital, like this. And let's declare, I guess. The plan is the same. Peace out allies ASAP, and then the war will be quite easy. Although, okay, the plan is not really the same. This time I'm trying to switch down Jangpur first, to not let my allies take it. Ok, let's piss out Mutan, break its alliances, why not? Let's also piss out Gujarat. I'm trying to piss everyone out, because Bahmanis have declared on Malwa, so it also may piss out soon. Well, a second idea group I was going to take administrative, but expansion ideas, trade ideas, or maybe offensive ideas also might be good. Well, I will take administrative. Classic pubbing ideas. Well, and now let's piss out. So, Take as many provinces for your missions as you can. Maybe you can also make like a shield, like like this, for example. So these provinces will most definitely go to you. And very important, break alliances. So your priority is obviously your mission tree. You must complete it. And I think let's briefly talk about aggressive expansion at alliances. It might be a problem. So about alliances. To break alliance walls, you can either break them with your favors. If you're allied to the nation that allied to your enemy, that's first option. Second option, you can declare on ally with a nation. Well, for example, we could declare on Gaur, Malva would join in, and we would be able to break its alliances. Indian alliances are usually the worst, still it's possible to break them up. And about aggressive expansion, also quite important. Well, currently you shouldn't have any problems with aggressive expansion if you conquer different religious groups, like when decade you conquer Buddhists, second decade you conquer Hindus, then you conquer Sunni, you won't most likely accumulate enough of aggressive expansion. But if you start consuming Sunnis, then there might be a problem. Well, there are a few simple tricks. First one is to be allied to as many nations as possible. Then they won't get any aggressive expansion. Well, they will, but not as much. And second one is to always have truce. So, for example, you just conquer Janpur, you have your truce with Gujarat has ended, you declare on Gujarat, for example. Then your truce with Malwa has ended, you declare on Malwa. If nation has a truce, it can't join the coalition, and that's important. Well, there is no need to rush like that. Bengal is the richest Indian nation, you can even play toll if you want to. And after you finish your missions, you can even from Delhi. You will get a new mission tree, and then you can form Hindustan. Well, basically exploit your allies and break alliances of your enemies, and you will be golden. Thank you for watching, hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Have a good day.